Hello friends, I am Dr. Aniket Pavanoji and you are watching Basic Chemistry. Welcome to the next part of Chemistry of Transition Elements. First of all, I request you to subscribe my channel and also hit the bell icon to get the notification of my new videos. Let's start the video. In this video, we will learn magnetic properties, catalytic properties and along with this, we will see the applications of transition elements. Let's start with magnetic property. The magnetic property of any element is due to the presence of unpaired electrons. This unpaired electron revolve around its axis. This motion is called as spin motion. Due to spin motion, it has spin magnetic moment. The electron not only revolves around its axis but also it revolves around the nucleus. This motion is called as orbital motion. Due to this orbital motion, it has orbital magnetic moment. The total magnetic moment of any element is the combined contribution of spin magnetic moment and orbital magnetic moment. The total formula for magnetic moment is given as mu s plus l is equal to under root 4s into s plus 1 plus L into L plus 1, where S is the spin quantum number and L is the orbital quantum number. In the second video of transition elements, we have seen that the transition metals have a very good ability to form a complex and the characteristic electron that is the D electron which is filled in the N minus 1 shell or penultimate shell is involved in the formation of a complex. Therefore, its orbital motion that is the revolving around the nucleus is quenched and the total magnetic moment depends only on the spin motion. This is because the electron is involved in the formation of a complex. The d orbitals which contains the characteristic electron responsible for the magnetic property is involved in the bond formation with the ligand. Due to this bond formation, the electron's orbital motion is quenched and the total magnetic moment is only due to the spin motion that is the electron which revolves around its axis. So this is calculated by spin only formula mu s is equal to under root 4s into s plus 1. Or in case of d block elements, we can also calculate the magnetic moment by formula mu is equal to under root n into n plus 2 where n is the number of unpaired electrons. Let's use this formula to calculate the magnetic moments of various 3D electronic configurations. In the first column, we have transition metal ions and in the second column we have their corresponding outer electronic configurations. For example, in case of 3D1 electronic configuration, there is one unpaired electron and its magnetic moment is calculated as 1.73 by using a formula under root n into n plus 2. For the second 1IDM3+, it has two unpaired electrons. The magnetic moment is calculated as 2.83. In case of chromium, there are three unpaired electrons, the magnetic moment is 3.87. In case of manganese 3 plus, the D4 electronic configuration, four unpaired electrons, magnetic moment is calculated as 4.90. In case of Fe3 plus, or we can also take the example of Mn2 plus, that is manganese 2 plus, there are total five unpaired electrons, total magnetic moment is calculated as 5.92. Now all the orbitals contains one unpaired electron and for the next element the electron pairing will take place. Here we have to remember in case of cobalt 3 plus there are six unpaired electrons. One pairing has occurred. So there are total now four unpaired electrons. The magnetic moment is calculated as 4.90. Similarly for 3D7 electronic configurations there are total three unpaired electrons. The magnetic moment is calculated as 3.87. Similarly, for nickel 3D8 electronic configurations, there are only two unpaired electrons. Magnetic moment is 2.83. And finally, for 3D9 electronic configurations, there will be only one unpaired electron. Therefore, the magnetic moment is calculated as 1.73. In case of zinc 2 plus 3D10 electronic configurations, there will be no unpaired electrons. Magnetic moment will be zero. This is how we calculate the magnetic moments of various transition metal ions. Let's move to the catalytic property of transition elements. We know that when a catalyst is used, for example, here A and B are the reactants and when the catalyst is involved in the reaction, it first forms an intermediate 
and this intermediates then dissociates to give the final product AB. Why do we use catalyst in a reaction? The transition metals have the ability to use it as a catalyst. Why do we use the catalyst? Because catalyst increases the rate of reaction without getting consumed in the reaction. Catalyst speeds up the reaction by reducing the activation energy. Catalyst allows the reaction to work at much lower temperature and reduces the energy used up in a reaction. In this way, when the energy requirement of a particular reaction is reduced, the catalyst actually saves the money of the particular industry. And not only this, at the end of the reaction, the catalyst is again regenerated. These are the all properties of the catalyst and all the transition metals, they have the ability to be used as a catalyst in a specific reactions. Let's see why do transition metals have the ability to be used as a catalyst. We know that many of the transition metals, they have vacant d orbitals. Transition metals, they show variable oxidation states. For example, manganese shows oxidation state from plus 2 to plus 7. Transition metals have the tendency to form various complexes. Transition metals and their compounds provides a large surface area on which reactants can get adsorbed and hence behave as a good catalyst. Let's see one example how do transition metals are used as a catalyst. I am taking the example of oxidation of sulfur dioxide to sulfur trioxide which is a very important process used in the manufacture of sulfuric acid. Here vanadium pentoxide which is an oxide of vanadium is used as a catalyst. In case of vanadium pentoxide first it gets dissociated into V2O4 plus oxygen. The oxygen generated in this reaction reacts with the sulfur dioxide and gives sulfur trioxide which is the required product. Among O2 molecules the half O2 is used for the oxidation process and the remaining half oxygen again reacts with V2O4 to give the original reactant that is V2O5. In this way the catalyst is regenerated in the reaction. Similarly the finely divided nickel can adsorb large quantity of hydrogen at high temperatures. Therefore, finely divided nickel is used as a catalyst in various reactions. One example is reduction of unsaturated ethylenic compounds. For example, ethylene gas reacts with the hydrogen in the presence of finely divided nickel to give ethane. Another example is platinum black is used as a catalyst in the preparation of formaldehyde from methyl alcohol. In this reaction, oxygen reacts with methyl alcohol in the presence of platinum black to give the formaldehyde. Another famous example is the mixture of finely divided iron and molybdenum is used as a catalyst in Haber's process for the production of ammonia. Let's move to the applications. Well, there are various applications of transition metals. For this specific video, I have taken some of the examples. The alloy of titanium with chromium, Fe and molybdenum are used in making rails, gears, propellers, car wheels, etc. Ferro-vanadium alloy is used in the construction of motor parts. Aluminum vanadium alloy is used in the manufacture of aircraft parts. Chromium is widely used for the plating metals since it is resistant to corrosion. Iron is used to make magnets and dynamos for electric motors. Nickel, palladium, platinum are used as a catalyst. Zinc is extensively used for galvanizing iron that is for the manufacture of iron sheets for roofing, utensils, pipes etc. Well, these are very few applications of transition metals, but if you search it on Google or anywhere in the search engine, you will find plenty of examples of transition metals. If you like my video, click on like, do share and subscribe my channel. If you want to mention something or ask something, mention it in the comment box. Also hit the bell icon to get the notification of my new videos and keep watching basic chemistry. Thank you.